Hannah. And I'm Nick. And it's Tuesday with Team RCIA, and it's been a little minute since we've been live, but uh, goodness, a lot has happened <laughs> since we were here. Yeah, one, one big thing is uh, just a few days ago, Pope Francis made an announcement or issued a decree or an apostolic letter uh, mm -hmm. with some important implications or ramifications for the ministry of catechist. Yes. So basically what he did was to establish the ministry of catechist as a permanent instituted vocation. Now, that took some time for me to kind of figure it out, figure out, because I have considered myself to have the voc a vocation to be a catechist, and I've considered it kind of permanent. I've been doing it since I was in my 20s, <laughs> so, so I don't know if you can get much more permanent than that, but may, Diana, you're better at canon law stuff. Maybe you oh, can explain no. about no. what what it means for this to be a permanent ministry. I have no skills in canon law. Do not quote me on anything, but I do know all about uh, church language and church speak and church decrees. And so the Pope made a moto motu proprio, which is kind of like an official statement from the Pope, uh, saying that we have a new instituted ministry in the church. And that phrase is pretty important, instituted ministry meaning it has a, a more formal recognition than simply something that has been going on uh, for many, many, many years in uh, all of our parishes where we have catechists. We got a ton of catechists everywhere, but now the title of instituted catechist gives it a different degree of recognition and uh, a different kind of aspect in the hierarchy, using that word very intentionally, hierarchy meaning uh, the various roles of ministries in the church itself. So think of the church as a body of Christ. The All of the members have a particular role and there is a hierarchy in that where the relationship between members is very important. And so uh, now we have this official function of catechist and this function is open to both women and men uh lay persons uh, as well as I, I i didn't read closely if it said specifically ordained but the point is this is primarily a function of lay ministry in the church yeah i think it's a <clears throat> it's a lay ministry it's not uh from the way I read the document, it's not a ministry that the, the, the ordained have a ministry of catechesis by their ordination. So this would they would not become instituted catechists yeah. or or maybe someone who's an instituted catechist could then become a deacon or a priest at some later point. But I don't think well, I don't know who knows, but I don't think it goes the other way. So it's, it's not the first time the Pope has done this. You may remember that he recently also instituted the ministries made permanent, the ministries of lector and acolyte. And and those were temporary ministries. They were they were instituted only for those in process for ordination. Yeah. So you would not if in a normal circumstance, no one in the process of ordination would remain a lector. So they get instituted as a lector as while they're in the seminary and then move on to be ordained. And so so there are a variety of things that are happening yeah. in this most recent statement by the Pope. So you wrote uh, an article kind of highlighting a couple of uh, really well, important uh, aspects and why this matters for RCI. Yeah, teams. I was trying to figure out what this means for RCI teams because from the you got to kind of look at this from the worldwide church. So the Pope is looking at you know, his experience in Latin America, and, and also this happens a lot in Africa, <clears throat> where uh, there will uh, there'll be an active parish, but there's no priest around for miles and miles and miles, and somebody is running that parish, and, and usually the person running that parish is called a catechist, and they may have formal training, or they may just be, you know, sort of uh, discerned by the community as the best person around here to be doing this. 
but they they have sort of a, a teaching function in the sense their their job in running the parish is to hand on the faith. That's that's sort of the mission, and and that ministry is um, what, what do I say? It's, there's no commissioning for that really. There's no institution of it until now, and so so a lot of people are saying you know the pope is primarily thinking of those instances in which he wants to give some formal recognition to the leaders of these parishes where there's no priest available. But it also impacts us in the United States where we have a long tradition of people serving as catechists in parishes and some have quite extensive uh, academic and ministerial training. And, and in many, many dioceses, that, that person is sometimes called a master catechist. And there's master catechist training programs in the Diocese of mm -hmm. San Jose and lots of other dioceses around the country. Most RCI teams do not have a, a master catechist or someone with extensive catechetical training on the RCI team. That's not 100% true, but that's usually the case. And oftentimes we wind up calling somebody on that RCA team, maybe everybody on that RCA team, we refer to them as RCIA catechists or catechumenate catechists. And, and by that we mean the same thing as those, those folks who are running parishes in rural areas in Latin America. The job of the RCA catechist is to hand on the faith. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you mentioned that uh, the Pope, or was it uh, his... Um Oh, his spokesperson, Archbishop <clears throat> Fisichella. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Reno or Rhino Fisichella is an archbishop in the Vatican, and he led a press conference yes. announcing this new uh, document, this new new decision by the Pope, and he said, <clears throat> "He's this is kind of confusing to me." He said, "You know, now there's going to be this this instituted ministry of catechists, and not everybody that we refer to a cate as a catechist today." will wind up being called a catechist instituted once catechist. this new yeah once this new ministry is is formalized or, or established mm -hmm. so i'm not sure exactly what that means for rci teams i i i can't imagine that every bishop in the united states and canada and australia is going to require that there's an instituted catechist on the rci team we won't it, it would be like requiring that there's a deacon on every RCA team. In some parishes, that's totally doable. But in lots and lots of parishes, there's no deacon available, and, and we still have to have a catechumenate process in those parishes. I think what we're going to see is that, in, at least in the United States, in, in most parishes, there will be at least one person who is called or recognized as the instituted catechist. And that could be the what we call the DRE right now, the Director of Religious Education, mm -hmm. uh, the Faith Formation Director, whoever is sort of the head formation person in a parish staff. And, uh, and that person could be the one who oversees the various catechetical initiatives, including the right of Christian initiation of adults, the, the RCI itself. So it, it could be that this is simply giving that person a more uh, acknowledged universal role in the sense of their ministry of uh, catechesis. But the the biggest thing I think, um, well, there are, two, there are two big things in my head just from reading what you had written. First off, the primary reason to do this, to open it up to uh, as a ministry primarily for lay women and men uh, to serve in, is that it, it acknowledges the inherent baptismal dignity that is given to every person by their baptism. It, it is a dignity that uh, gives the gifts to each person uh, for a particular vocation and that's that kind of thinking isn't as uh, common um, in our way of thinking right now when we think of vocation we we immediately think of ordination and then we start if if that is our approach we start getting uh, phrases among parish ministers like uh, I'm only helping father 
or I'm just a volunteer, or I'm not really uh, the expert in this. We should ask Father, we should ask the deacon, or we should ask whoever is the, the ordained or religious among us. Of course we get our, our lawnmower going. And so uh, here in this ministry of catechesis, it, it recognizes that the gifts uh, that we have received in baptism give us the authority to follow that vocation, whatever the gift of the Holy Spirit has given us. And so for those who have been given the gift of teaching and handing on the faith, they are recognized just as much as those who are ordained or those in consecrated life um, as having that responsibility. So that's a big thing for us because for RCIA, that's what we're training people in to prepare them to recognize and take on their baptismal responsibility, which gives each person a specific vocation in the work and mission of Christ. Yeah, I think that's that's really really important. Um, and and there's a it, just to to kind of um, use that as a springboard to to mention there's there's two other points about the Pope establishing this as a permanent vocation that we really need to understand as uh, as uh, uh, catechumenate ministers. Uh, first is that. <clears throat> Like you said, Diana, that the probably in every parish there'll be someone like a DRE or director mm -hmm. who's established as the Institute of Catechists. Now, in in lots of parishes, that person today is primarily concerned with uh, getting a bunch of grade school level catechists for for forming children in the faith. You know, it's running like running the parish CCD program or the parish school religious education program. The Pope said that. You know, we, that's you know that's important. But what what really this institute of catechist has to be an expert in is the is the the development of the different stages from initial proclamation of the charisma through uh, through the the formation of catechumens and those who are going to now start living a new life in Christ. Basically, the the institute of catechist has to become an expert in the process of Christian initiation. Mm -hmm. And and that's not 100% the case in all parishes, and that's going to be a shift. The other shift is that this ministry of instituted catechist is, is a ministry that is um, responsible to the bishop in the same way a deacon is responsible to the bishop. So in your parish, if you have a deacon, the person that decides that the deacon should be there and, and kind of what the deacon should do and the deacon's mission in that parish, the person who decides that is the bishop, not the pastor of that parish. Or the deacon. Or the deacon, right. And, and it's, it, at least on paper, the same way with these instituted catechists. Uh, the, the, if you become an instituted catechist, you're, the bishop may decide to send you to a parish that's not your home parish mm -hmm. if the need is greater in some other part of the diocese. So the, that could be really interesting <clears throat> in how we approach uh, or understand this ministry of catechesis. It's primarily not a ministry to your parish. It's a ministry to the church um, as regulated by your local bishop. And, and so the bishop can assign you somewhere else, send you where you do not want to go. <laughs> but if that is if that is the vocation that you have uh, responded to, if that is the call that has been given to you by the Holy Spirit, then uh, that is a discernment. That yeah, is... we, we have that situation here in the Diocese of San Jose. We have, we have a lot of deacons, and most of them serve in their home parishes. But, but we have a much smaller number of those deacons are bilingual and speak Spanish or, or Vietnamese or Korean. And those are all needs that we have in the parish uh, and the diocese. And in, in some cases, a friend of mine is assigned to a parish that is not his home parish because he speaks Spanish and the, the need for him in this other parish, they have a very large Spanish speaking population and, and he's needed there. So the bishop has assigned him to that parish. Yes. So lots of things that we're still um, going to uncover with this proclamation by the Pope. Um, I think there is a ritual that is 
uh, in the process right. we'll of be being up. created. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is a serious thing. And I think it's a good thing for RCI ministry because it puts front and cent center the number one mission of every catechist and the number one goal of the catechumenate, that is to proclaim the first proclamation, the kerygma, the good news of Jesus, so that people uh, respond to that and are incorporated and initiated into the body of Christ. That's that's the whole thing we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's the whole yeah. thing we're about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And it will also um, uh, put more responsibility on each of us to discern our vocation and our commitment to this ministry. Um, and to put in the work that will be required, the self-sacrificing work that will be required for us to serve in this ministry well. So that lots of things, and you're going to be writing more about it. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try to write a few more articles as I read more and try to understand more. So follow along on the Team RCA website. You can read the article that I've already written. The link for it is in the comments section there, and uh, and share your own thoughts about what you think this will be. Um, how it's how it's going to affect your ministry and your parish, uh, what you what you imagine the blessings of this are, what you imagine some of the some of the challenges mm -hmm. might be. Yeah, and, and uh, parishes. So we have a comment here from Katie that parishes that have uh, two permanent deacons and a priest on their uh, RCI team that definitely is a, a blessed team. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll see how how things play out here because some of that blessing can be uh, distributed to other places that uh, need some of the, the gifts and talents that your parish has. Yep. So um, we have a couple of things to share. Yeah, we want to let you know about a, um, a seminar that we have coming up. We're going to do a summer seminar uh, that's going to cover, it's going to uh, last over three Saturdays in June, Saturday, uh, mornings for us, uh, but depending on where you are. Um, <clears throat> so there's a link there for that. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to go and sign up for that um, that summer seminar starting June 5th, June 5th. June 5. So coming up here pretty, pretty soon. Yeah. So, so go there and grab your seat and make sure you got a spot. And if you're not, if uh, we've been talking about Team RCI membership uh, for the last uh, couple of months or several weeks now, and uh, membership had been on sale, but if you sign up for the online seminar coming up you can get membership on sale through your registration there so check out the link there and then uh, something else this one is a, a gift right yeah free download a free handout on adult learning principles that that we use with uh, with the seekers uh, so we um, some of us some of you I know from talking with you some of you are really good at understanding and implementing adult learning principles but I know for me it was something that I had to go mm -hmm. learn I wasn't really part of my education in learning how to be a catechist so so this is a real simple handout that you can use for team training uh, if it's helpful you can put it in your parish bullet and use it however you want uh, but it's there for you it's free so go ahead and download that there you go well so uh, we'll probably be back on next week and we'll see if the Pope makes another yeah. <laughs> proclamation <laughs> by then. We'll see. He's uh, he's pretty prolific and yeah. hard at work. But uh, we're coming up to Pentecost and uh, the end of the post-baptismal period of post-baptismal catechesis and mystagogy. So uh, congratulations to all of your neophytes and those who have celebrated the sacraments during this Easter season. Yeah. We keep praying for you and we ask you to keep praying for us. Thanks for all your hard work, everyone, and thanks for spending this time with us. Take care. God bless.